my name is Kelly Dale with Off The Beaded Path and I am so excited to bring to you a brand new collaboration video between me and my friend Ranga Shri of Shri Designs. So a few months ago, Ranga Shri and I were talking and we said we've got to do a collaboration together and since Ranga Shri is the queen of encasements, I said, okay, you design a pendant and I will design a necklace to go with that pendant. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Ranga Shri has designed a beautiful new pendant called the Dainty Daisy Pendant. I'm going to go over it step by step today, but if you want a written pattern, you can purchase one at shridesignsllc.com and we'll put a link below so that you can go and snag your copy of the pattern. Also, tomorrow, I will be showing how to make the necklace to go with that. I already have the pattern for sale on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com and it is the Dainty Daisy Chain. So let's go ahead and talk about what we need to get started. So first of all, I wanted to let you see this is the cover of in some beautiful samples that Ranga Shri has made of this pendant. You can find Ranga Shri's work at shridesignsllc.com, on facebook.com at shridesigns, or on Instagram at shridesigns. And that is where you can go to get your pendant is on her website. So, the pendant itself is absolutely gorgeous. I whipped this one up the other day, and it comes up really quickly, and I think you are going to love it. So, let's talk about what you're going to need. So, you are going to need a 14 millimeter Rivoli. I am going to use Crystal Royal Green. You are going to need one gram of a size 11 Delica. This will be called our D1. So this is Fancy Lined Aqua DB2381. You're going to need another gram of a different size 11 seed bead. This is what we're going to call our D2, and this is DB1516. You are going to need what she calls the number A. This is a 15-0 galvanized yellow gold Mayuki. You are going to need another gram of a color B. 11 O seed bead. This is a silver line green AB. You are going to need 30 super duo beads and six three millimeter pearls or drucks. I'm going to be using a size 12 beading needle with two yards of thread and I'm actually going to be using um, 1G in the teal color but you can also use your six pound fire line. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to get started, I'm gonna pick up a B. This is my 11 seed bead, and I'm gonna come back through that bead, leaving about a 12 inch tail. Okay, so about the length of my board is what I need to leave here. And I'm gonna come right back up through this same bead again, so that this bead is my stop bead. This will just stop any of my beads from falling off. Now I'm gonna pick up a D1 and a D2 18 times for a total of 36 beads. So we just pick up one, two, okay, and you just continue to pick them up in this order. So, so far I have one set, two sets, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 16, 17. Okay, and if I counted right, that should be 18 sets. But we are going to double count just in case. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17, and 18. So I have 18 steps sets. So that's 36 beats. And so I'm going to let them drop all the way down here. And I'm going to go through the first two beads that I threaded on. So I am not going to go through the stop bead here, but I'm going to come back up through the first D1 and D2. All right, so I'm just going through those first two beads again. And I'm going to pull this all the way through so that this is what we have so far. So when we build this bezel, we do not want to pull this tight, all right? We just want to pull the beads enough to pop them into place. So I'm coming out of a D2. I'm going to pick up a D1, skip a D1, and go through D2. I'm going to hold this in place as I pull the thread. And... Remember, I don't want to pull it tight, but I do want to pull it enough to pop those beads into place. So you can see here how those two beads will now sit on top of each other. So I'm going to work this whole round simply picking up a D1, skipping a D1, and going through a D2. And again, I'm not pulling it super tight. I just want to pull it enough that those beads will pop on top of each other. So we will continue just picking up a D1, skipping a D1, and going through a D2 all the way around. So once I'm all the way back around and I only have one bead left to add, I'm going to pick up that D1. I skip the D1 and to finish out the row, I have to go through the D2. All right, so don't try to step up. You're just going to go through the D2 here. And then to step up, we go through the first D1 that we added, which is going to be this one right here. We added this one on our previous row. Or this current row, I'm sorry, not previous. Okay, so when you get the row done, it's going to look something like this. So now we are going to be adding some D2s. So we are going to pick up one D2. We are going to skip a D2 and go through the next D1 that we have sticking up here. Pick up a D2, skip a D2, and go through D1. And we are going to work this whole round picking up a D2 skipping a D2, and going through a D1. So once I've gone all the way around, I'm ready to add the last bead here for my row. So when I add the last bead, I have to remember to skip the D2, go through the D1. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and do that step up all at one time. So I go through the last bead for the row and the first bead that I added on this row. So that when I pull that, now that makes my little encasement here and I'm ready to start the next row. So step four says that we are gonna pick up and work an A all the way around. So remember A's are our little size 15 seed bead. So I pick up an A and I come through the next D2 that's sticking up. So essentially, I will be skipping a D1 and going through a D2. So I pick up an A, I skip a D1, and I go through a D2. This is my bead that's sticking up here. I'm gonna do this all the way around, and I wanna pull this tighter than I have been because this is going to start, um, you know, the front of our piece and it's going to hold our rivoli in place so we really need to be consistent about our tightness that we pull or our tension that we use because you can already start to see how those are kind of pulling in there and that's exactly what you want so i'm going to continue to add a's around the ring so i've gone all the way around here with my a's and you can see i have one last a to add so I skip the D1 and I go through the D2 
and I can go through the A all in one little go through here. This finishes my row and it does the step up. So I'm gonna hold this in place, I'm gonna pull, and now this is what my piece looks like. So step five, I'm going to peyote some more of my A beads here, but this is gonna be a different row. So I'm going to pick up an A and go through the next A. I'm gonna pick up an A and I'm gonna go through the next A, but this time I need to skip a spot. But instead of just skipping it where we're gonna see a thread go through, we need to actually go through the, I'm coming out of my A here, I'm gonna go through the D1 or D2 and then through my A. So from where I'm coming out, right here of the A, I go through the D2 and then the next A. So essentially we skip a spot, but we don't see a thread there. And that's exactly what we wanna do. So we're gonna do this all the way around. So we pick up an A, we go through the next A, pick up an A, go through the next A, and then we have to skip a spot. So I go through the D2 and then the A. And then I'm ready to continue on just like I have done. So as you can see here, I've gone all the way around and I've added my little sets. This is the last A that I've added. So now to continue, I'm gonna go through the D2 and two of my A's. I might can get this all in one go. Yes, I can. There we go. Just like that. Now, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to put an A into each of our little holes here. So I pick up an A and I go through the next A. And look how cute that is. So now we have to go down through the A the D2 and the next two A's. I can't just go across because I'm gonna see thread if I do that. So we have to stitch through our beads to get there. Okay, so I pick up an A and I go through the next A sticking up. And now you can see there what's happening. So we're gonna go ahead and go around and do that same thing. So now that I have my top finished, the pattern says I'm going to leave the working thread and then I need to thread a needle onto the tail here. So to do that, I'm just going to simply grab a hold and pull. And you can see now my stop bead comes right off. So I'll need to thread a needle onto this end and we will be using our tail thread. We will not be using our working thread. So you can see here, I have my needle threaded onto the short tail thread and your needle needs to be coming out of a D1, which is this color here. So I have my beautiful royal green Rivoli. Um, you can see it is kind of matte or opaque, I should say, on the back and then shiny on the front. So I'm going to put the shiny side down into my perfect sized encasement. If your encasement does not fit, then you have used your tension way too tight. Okay. So from where I'm coming out, I'm going to do a round of A's. So this simply means we're going to pick up an A. We are going to skip a D2 and go through the next D1. And you want to pull this tight all the way around as you work and don't go through other beads like I just did. But we are just going to work and pop these A's in and keep going through other beads that we should not be going through all the way around. And on this, again, we need to pull tightly. Do as I say, not as I do, my goodness. There we go, so I'm just gonna keep on adding these A's.
I've almost got all the way around. I have one last A to add. So I skip the D2 and I go through the D1 and the A. So I do a step up here. So just like that. You can see how beautiful this little encasement is. It's so fun to do. So now I'm going to work around where I'm going to pick up three A's. I'm going to skip an A and go through the next A. So I'm coming out here, I skip one and I go through one. Then I pick up one A and go through the very next A. Now I'm gonna do a little um, alternate as I go around. So I'm going to pick up three A, skip an A and go through an A. And then I pick up one A and I go through the next A. And I'm going to continue this all the way around. I only have one bead left to add here. You can see I did my arch of three and I have one little spot here now where I need to pick up an A and I go through the very next A sticking up, which is gonna be that last A for the row. And at this point, it's probably gonna be hard to get the needle through there. So you'll have to kind of just wiggle it around to get it in place. So now I need to do another step up. So this time to do the step up, I'm gonna come through two of my A's. You see here I have a set of three. So I'm just going to step up to come through two of those beads. Let me grab me some more A's here. I'm gonna thread on three A and I'm gonna jump all the way over here to my next arch of A's and I'm gonna go through just the middle bead of the next arch. Three A. Jump all the way to the next arch and go through just that middle bead there. And I'm gonna do this all the way around, three A's, jump into the next arch and going through the middle bead of that arch there. 3A, go through the middle bead. So we're not doing anything basically with those little single del or single A's that we put in. We're just kind of skipping over those. So when I add my last little set of three here, I'm coming out at this arch, so I have to go through the middle bead, which will be that first bead that I started with. So now I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come through all these beads again, pulling them tight, and then I'm going to tie off this short tail thread and be done with the short tail thread. Now that I have the thread completely tied off on the back, I've got my needle threaded back onto the tail thread that, or the working thread I had here on the front. Now, I'm coming out of an A and I need to come out of a D1 on the back. So one of my dark green I need to be coming out of. So from where I'm coming out at, I'm going to continue on through the next A. Then I'm going to go through, let's see, the next D2. Okay. 
the next D2 and I'm working back the other direction. And then through the D1 here on the back. Okay, so it was the ones that were sticking up where, that we added the A's between here. And you can see that I am right under where I start one of these little pyramids or V's or whatever you call them. I am right under that little A. So now we're ready to start. So we are going to pick up an A, an S, which is our, or I'm sorry, three S, which is our super duo and an A. So an A, 3S, and we make sure all three holes are good to go, and an A. Since I've got these beads, now from where I'm coming out here, I'm coming out of a D1. I'm going to skip the next D1 and go through the next D2. So I skip one and go through one. So when we pull, the beads are going to lay like this. So now we need to thread on one B. This is our 11 O and we go through the next D1. So from where I'm coming out, I skip a D2 and I go through a D1. So that when I do that, now it's pulled through. So now I'm just going to alternate these steps. So I will pick up an A, three of my duos, and an A. I will skip a D1 and go through the next D2 here. just like this. Then we pick up a B. This is our regular 11O. We skip the next D2 and go through the very next D1. So I'm going to alternate these steps all the way around my piece. Okay friends, so once you get all your duos added, your piece is going to look similar to this and I'll show you an up close picture here in a minute. But I would be amiss if I did not tell you that no matter what thread you use, go back and reinforce all of your beads that you added in this row. If you want these beads to stay up and pretty as a peacock, then make sure to reinforce. I know that there's those of us, AKA me, who hate to reinforce, but we need to make sure to reinforce all the duos to make sure that they stay up and they stay pretty like we want them to. So once you've gone all the way around, added your beads and reinforced them, this is what your piece will look like. Now I want to step up by coming out of the first B that I added. That's my size 11 seed bead, regular 11. And at this point, I'm gonna pick up three of my A's and I'm gonna go through the open hole of the duo right next to that B there. So it's gonna make a little arch. Then we pick up a duo and go through the open hole of the next duo. Pick up a duo and go through the open hole of the next duo. You can see what happens there. And then we are gonna pick up three of my A's and I'm gonna go through the next B. So you can see what happens there. So we're gonna do that same thing all the way around. So we're gonna pick up three A's and go through the open hole of my next duo here. Pulling that nice and tight. And then I'm gonna pick up a duo and go through the open hole of the next duo. A duo, go through the open hole of the next duo. And then three A's 
and go through the next B down here. And I'm gonna continue this all the way around. So I do love it when a plan comes together. This is what my piece is going to look like at this point. You can see that by adding our beads, instead of everything being curved to the back now, everything is out flat. So I did a little bit of a step up. So when I added my last three beads here, I went through the B and then I stepped up by coming through the next three A's. So these are the threes that I just had added at the very beginning of that step. So now I'm gonna pick up three more A's and I'm gonna step up by coming through the top hole of the next duo here. Now I'm gonna pick up an A, a B, a three millimeter, a B, and an A. And I'm gonna come across to the next duo and I'm gonna go through that bead. Three A, and I'm gonna go through the three A here. And if you can, you can go ahead and go through the B also at the same time. So there is one petal finished. So then to get to the next one, I'm gonna go up through my three A's. I'm gonna pick up three A and I'm gonna go through the top hole of the next one here. Next duo. And I'm gonna pick up an A, a B, a three millimeter, a B, and an A. And I'm gonna come across and I'm gonna come through the next duo. Then three, a, and go through my 3A down here. And I'm going to continue this all the way around. Sorry about that, guys. Until I have all my petals complete. So once you finish all your petal embellishments, this is what your beautiful pendant is going to look like so far. So this is a look at the back and this is a look at the front. So once I finished this last embellishment here, I just stepped up to come out of the first pearl that I added. So now we're gonna basically be using only our B beads, our regular size 11 seed beads. So coming out of the pearl, I'm gonna pick up four B's. My thread is coming out this direction, so I'm gonna come right back through that same pearl to make a circle. I'm gonna go through one pearl. I'm sorry, one a B, not a pearl. And I'm gonna pick up a B and go through the next B. Pick up a B and go through the very next B. And pick up a B and go through the next B. So what that does is that pops these little beads into place. Now I'm gonna continue through the pearl. And then the next one, two, three, four beads so that I'm coming out here at the top. So one, two, three, four. So when I come out, this is what it should look like. So from here, we're gonna pick up 4B. I'm gonna come right back around through that same bead again to make a circle. And just like we did down here, I'm gonna pick up a B 
Well, first of all, I'm going to go through a B. I'm going to pick up a B and I'm going to come through the very next B. Pick up a B, come through the very next B. and pick up a B, and I'm gonna go through the next B and this B. So I'm gonna go through two at one time, and pull. So now I'm going to stitch to come out of the top here. And now I'm going to do this little section three more times to have a total of four created sections here, not counting this section. So as you can see, I have one, two, three, four boxes. Now, if you are following along with Ranga Shree's pattern, she only tells you to do three boxes. You will need four if you are going to make this to go with the necklace that I've created for this piece. So not counting the first box, I have one, two, three, four. So now I'm gonna flip this over to the back and I've done, you know, I've come out of the top here. I'm gonna pick up two of my bees and I'm gonna come through the pearl. And you can see here, I got the thread caught, so I've got to get that fixed because we don't want any sort of knots there. Okay, so I'm not going to pull this completely yet because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to pick up two more bees and I'm going to come through the tip bead here of my last little box so that now when I pull it, I have a little circular bail, but I'm not done yet. I'm gonna come through the next B here. I'm going to pick up a B and go through the next B, Pearl, and B. This is gonna give me those little points, just like I've got on each of my other things, just like that. So I still gotta go through one more B here. And then I'm going to pick up one last B. And my thread's coming out here. So I'm just going to go through the very next B. And so at this point, that bail is now complete. And I can tie my thread off and get rid of the working tail. Okay, so as you can see, the colors that you do really change up the look of this piece. Now, I have created a necklace to go with this piece, and so I can basically now take and thread this onto my necklace, and then I will have a beautiful new necklace to wear this pendant on. So this is what I'll be showing in the video tomorrow. You can wear this as a regular necklace. You can tack it right here and make it into a lasso or a Y type necklace, or you can make this into a wrap bracelet. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed learning how to make this beautiful dainty daisy pendant by my friend Ranga Shri of Shri Designs. Now make sure to come back tomorrow where I will be showing you how to make the dainty daisy chain to go with this dainty daisy pendant. I hope you all have a fabulous day. Make sure to click on the links below and give my friend Ranga Shri some love and thank her for um, collaborating on this video with me. So guys, We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.